Hi everyone, my name is Laura van der Lubbe and I'm here to present our paper using topic modeling to personalize digital self-compassion training. Uh, this project is, this is part of a larger project that I'm working on, on mental health of uh, young adults. So uh, we want to do something to help them increase their mental well-being and um, take away some of the burdens that they experience when they want to work on this. So we have created an online self-compassion training that is completely self-guided, which means that they can access it anytime they want uh, on their phone or on their computer. And there's no professional intervention uh, and interaction. And uh, this means that it's always available. And it's, um, yeah, there's a lower threshold um, for them to actually uh, participate in this. Um, so the design and the, the study about that is a different paper, but today I want to talk about the topic modeling that we use there. Uh, why did we use it? We want to make sure that uh, there's some personalization in the exercises. So there are various exercises in the website where we use a situation that we describe to the user and then the user has to respond to that. And what we want is that uh, these situations match with situations that participants described in other um, parts of the website or are completely the opposite so that they practice with new situations as well. So that's what the personalization is about. So overall, the, the flowchart of our project is that we started with the data collection. We looked then at how can we do the topic modeling and how can we integrate it with the website. So about these parts I want to talk today. So first of all, the data, it was from a pilot study that we did with the website. Uh, we had 24 participants there, only 18 of those actually uh, provided us with data. Um, these are all young adults and they use the website in the same way as uh, regular users would do. And you see here on uh, in figure one that not all participants contributed the same amount of data. Um, but we do have uh, some data from all of them. It's all in Dutch uh, and we have 81 unique notes from two different journals. Uh, in those journals, they can talk about different situations that they want with free text. But they also add a tag that they can write themselves, which is very short uh, and which is a short description of what they are describing there so that they can easily find back things about the same tag. And then there's also one exercise that's very free. Um, so there they can also describe the situation that has happened to themselves. Um, but here they don't add a tag. Uh, we have different topics that we want to detect. So they're predefined. Uh, originally, we had only four. So that was where we wrote situations about. And those were the topics that we wanted to detect. However, after looking at the data, but also talking to the participants, we found out that there are much more topics and some of the topics were a little bit changed, like relationships, uh, which first was called friendship, but we found out that people also wanted to talk about family relationships or romantic relationships. So we changed the name to relationships. Uh, so the larger set is the one that we used um, in our algorithm. So then the algorithm, um, first of all, there's a pre-processing phase. So we removed all the names uh, that were mentioned in the data for uh, anon anonymity. So uh, one of the researchers removed them so that the others during labeling couldn't see them anymore. And this was done manually. Then we translated it automatically with Google Translate. We then tokenized, removed stop words and lemmatized to prepare the text. And with this prepared text, we did the topic modeling. Uh, for this, we also created related words lists. So for the topics that I just discussed, we created related uh, word lists using the website relatedwords.org. Um, and we looked at what are relevant words because there are a lot of words there related, but uh, we did some um, uh, picking there. And we then look, and we also pre-process those uh, the same way as we pre-process the data from the participants. We then look at the overlap between the text and the related words. We also look at the overlap of the tag, if there is a tag, and the related words. Those are scored higher. Uh, so uh, a word in the text and a related word is plus one. Then for the text, we did uh, a three plus three, because it's much more high likely that 
this is actually describing the topic. And when the tag overlaps with the name of the topic, a topic, uh, then it's scored even higher. Uh, then we get different similarity scores and we choose the one with the highest, or we choose no topic if there are multiple with the highest score, or um, if the high score is below a certain threshold, which we'll talk about later. And then in the last phase, we have to do an evaluation. So we can look at the right predictions. We give gold labels to all the data so we can uh, look at the gold labels and the predicted labels and compare them. But we also want to look at where the prediction is right, but where also uh, it could be no topic. Uh, let me explain why. Um, in the website, it will be used as a way to help participants practice with different things. We think it's better when the algorithm says no topic than a wrong topic, um, because no topic is also not really harming uh, the experience of the user, but a wrong topic could be could be weird for a participant to think, I didn't talk about this, why am I now practicing with this? Instead of when no topic is just more of a random uh, experience. So we also use this, but we don't use this to improve our algorithm because then with only no topics, it would be 100%. So we look at the right predictions, but we also take into account this effect of uh, predicting no topic. All right, let's zoom in on the data a bit more. Let me get a laser pointer. Um, so this was when we only used the uh, first labels that we described. You see that a lot of the data could not be labeled uh, by us, uh, the manual um, labelers. So when we extended uh, our set, we did in decrease a lot in uh, where we couldn't really label it. The uh, largest category is relationships. It's even bigger than friendship because we included more types of relationships and also emotions, which is also a very broad, uh, broad category as well. We also looked at the gold labels and the words that appear more than five times to see if there are any words that we missed in the related words list. Most of the words are very general, like good or not. Uh, but some of the words are indeed words that we missed, like colleague, um, but also felt, which is also a noun. So that's where, why it wasn't lemmatized the right way. Um, but it's indeed an uh, expression of an emotion. So we did add that as well to the related words list. Uh, then we also, there are a lot of things with no topic. So we wanted to see if we could add a certain threshold for the number of words in a pre-processed um, set of words. Uh, but what you see there is that, yes, we do lose uh, some of the no topics, but we even lose more of the normal um, text with topics. So we decided to just use all texts to not lose any data. But we did look at the effect on the accuracy, which we'll see later in the presentation. And then for the accuracies, we also looked at um, the effect of having a minimal number for the similarity score, so a certain threshold. Um, but we see that it only increases for the gratitude, but for the others, it decreases after one. So we decided to just keep it at one. So if there is a similarity score of at least one, then we predict that uh, label. So here is an, uh, an overview of our accuracies. Um, when using all text, we have an accuracy of 50.4%, um, which is, of course, not very high. But when we look at uh, the right predictions plus the no topics, then it goes to 80%. So we see uh, that it's not very often uh, completely wrong. Um, we also see that it, in general, decreases when you lose uh, smaller texts, but you also lose quite some uh, data. Uh, we only see an improvement for the uh, gratitude. But because we lose so many texts, we don't think that this um, is something we should do right now. Um, we also see that for exercises, the score is lower than for the journals. So we do think that having a tech uh, really helps. Um, so we also looked at the different uh, topics and we see that social anxiety um, is relatively the, has the most incorrect predictions. This is also a very small uh, category in our current data set. So 
We don't really know if this will generalize on a larger data set. Um, yeah, we also again see that for most of the topics, the number of incorrect predictions really drops when you exclude the known topics. So in general, it's a very easy to understand algorithm and therefore also easy to change. We really know what we can change uh, if we want to. The results are promising. They're not extremely good, but they're also not bad. Uh, so we decided to use it in our website anyways uh, to see how it will perform in a real world bigger um, data set. So that's what we're currently working on. We're gathering data from a much larger study. Uh, we already have over 800 nodes, I think. Um, so we will evaluate it later to see how the algorithm performs on a larger data set and how it could be improved for future um, work. And so thank you for your attention. I hope uh, that I gave you a brief introduction to our uh, algorithm. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or contact me during the uh, conference. Bye.